Hey, I'm Bob with Laguna Tools, and we have a very exciting video for you today. Uh, you know, I've been in this machinery business quite a long time, and I've seen a lot of things happen, and I've always been a product guy. And occasionally a product comes along that really gets you excited, and this Smart Shop one is, is that product, and we're going to look in that great detail. If you followed our CNC product line at Laguna Tools, you've seen one of our offerings the last couple years has been a D-Series. And it's a nested base router, so that means it has a vacuum table, four foot by eight foot table, four horsepower spindle, handheld control, so it's really, really easy to use. And we've done really well with it. The people that have purchased the machine liked it, and it's worked well, and, and it's been real successful. But it didn't quite have the look of the smart shops. And so for 2013, we upgraded the D-Series to be one of the smart shop machines. Therefore, it shares the same frame design as the smart shops, and we'll look at that in a little detail. Okay, this is the new design of the Smart Shop 1 frame. If you notice, uh, it's, it's very similar to the Smart Shop 2. And, and here's why we did that. If, if you've watched some of our videos, you know that the Smart Shop machines create unbelievable edge finishes. And, and, and I'm talking about straight edges, no chatter, uh, high precision. Well, the reason for that is real simple. This is one piece. This is a one piece frame. Uh, that's what makes that all work. What you see on the screen there is one welded assembly. And uh, it's tubular steel, it's, it's all tied together. That's what makes the machine work. And it's funny, in machine tool design, if you don't have that frame, it doesn't matter what you hang on the rest of it, it doesn't matter. You'll see within this price range, it's real common to see machines that have bolt together frames, lightweight aluminum stuff, really flimsy construction, and they try to stick a good a brand name spindle on it and say it's a, a great CNC router. But if you don't do the fundamentals, it doesn't work. Now, to give you an idea, let me, let me show you how this compares to the Smart Shop 2. If you look at them, they're very similar. In fact, from a top view, if you notice, from, from the front to the back of the table, the structures are very, very similar. Now, the reason the Smart Shop 2 is a little different is because this machine frame that you see here has a tool changer, therefore it has to be longer here, and there has to be a bar that the tool changer rack mounts on. But the rest of the design is, is the same. So we get the, exactly the same edge finishes now on the Smart Shop 1 as we do on the Smart Shop 2. Now, so that, that's how the frames are, are constructed. Now, let's turn the tabletops on. And you'll notice also, and let's look from the top view, the tabletop designs are identical. So it's our, it's our universal table it's designed for flow through. It has T -slot, the T-slot feature, all of those things. So, so the machines basically, the frame designs, use the same mechanical engineering concepts. Now that we've looked over some of the engineering design features, let's actually go out and walk around the machine and look at some of those. This is a Laguna Smart Shop 1 CNC. We're really proud of the engineering accomplishments we've achieved when we design this machine. And we've already looked on the solid model of the design, how this whole base frame is, is really one welded structure. And, and we also talked about why we get good edge finishes and good accuracy. Another important component of that is the motion control. In this case, we're using contour guide rails in all three axes. In X and Y, we use a helical rack and pinion, and that's important because with helical rack and pinion, you have constant mesh, and they're, they're a lot smoother. If they're not helical, there's technically some bumping that goes on, and in helical, we have constant mesh. On the Z axis, we actually use a precision ground ball screw. We made lubrication on the machine very simple by including centralized lubrication. Now the Smart Shop 1 also has our universal vacuum table that includes a T-slot feature. So this is what the table looks like and we put these grooves in here so that you can do special configurations on, on where you direct vacuum. There's also six independent vacuum zones so you can really do a lot of special setups and we put the T-slots on here and people say, well, why do you do that? I said, well, here's exactly why. Sometimes when you're doing 3D files, they may be four or five hours long, and you don't want to run a vacuum pump that long. So the T-slot feature allows you to fixture that without having to run your vacuum pump. You know, a vacuum table doesn't do any good unless you have a vacuum pump, and so the Smart Shop 1s include these uh, 10 horsepower vacuum pumps. Uh, now, if you notice, I've left this one on the pallet, and that's because we move stuff around a lot here in the studio. But if you notice, it fits really nicely in this space behind the machine, so it doesn't take a lot of extra floor space. Okay, the Smart Shop one has a four horsepower liquid-cooled electrospindle. 
and the, the electric spindle is liquid cool for a reason, and that is we use these machines sometimes for long cycles. For instance, when you're doing 3D work, four or five hours is not unusual. Well, air cool spindles tend to get a little warm after that period of time. The liquid cools don't. We can basically run them continuously, so that's a big feature. Now, if you contrast that to an air cool spindle, unless they have a really efficient air cool fan design, uh, they tend to start building heat up. And, and if you run them long enough, you can have bearing failures over time because of that. We've mounted that spindle on a steel tool plate. And if you notice also, the gantry supports under this cover are actually three-quarter inch thick steel plates. So the, the, the entire structure is very rigid, and that's why you get good cut finishes on our, our machines. You know, one of the characteristics of the smart shop machines is that we put the electrical components in a, in a cabinet separate from the machine. From you say, well, why do you do that? Well, it's vibration. We want the components to be away from the normal machine vibrations that occur when you machine. So that's what we did on the smart shop one. Let's look inside this cabinet. Okay, one of the things that you look for when you're, when you're really looking at machinery is, is should there ever be a problem that you have to diagnose, are the wires numbered or labeled? And if you notice that how neat all the wiring is in the cabinets, we're very careful at Laguna in our, in our assembly factory to make sure that's correct because you may sometime need to diagnose a component and you need to know where the wire goes. And those, those numbers correspond to the schematics. You know, another change we made when we designed the Smart Shop 1 was to increase the gantry clearance um, much more than we had on the D-Series. The D-Series was a little bit lower, and, and sometimes that limits when you start cutting thicker 3D surfaces, you need a little bit more Z because you use longer tools, and so we put a real nice Z clearance on this machine. You know, you can have the most wonderfully engineered CNC machine ever made, but if you can't run the thing, it's worthless to you. All right, we put the Laguna HHC controller on this. HHC means handheld, and we did it for one reason, and it's really, really, really simple to use. It's very reliable, and it's simple to use, and it's simple to learn how to use. So the odds of you being successful quickly are very, very high. I wanted to introduce another concept to you in, in this video, and that really has to do with designing products. Uh, we're gonna go out and cut this on a machine, but I wanna kinda show you how I got to this design. And I used a 3D modeling software, this particular one's Rhino, and, and the reason I did that was because I wanted to be able to uh, design parts as they fit together because I'm using these Rayfix fasteners. And with the Rayfix fasteners, you know, you've got two adjacent parts and the hose got to line up or the part doesn't fit right. So 3D modeling was a great way to do that. And the other part of that is it kind of expands your woodworking experience. You know, basically if you've got a period of time some evening a couple hours or 30 minutes or 15 minutes, you can open up your computer and you can design the product on it. Then the router actually validates your design and it really changes your uh, dimension of your woodwork and, and, and I think it's very exciting to do it that way. Now let's look at that. Here's the golf bag rack and you kind of see it's just several pieces. It comes out of one sheet of material and it's RTA. Now let's look at that. Let's move in here where I can Zoom in a little bit on the back where you can see it. You see some guidelines on there. No, actually, I use those guidelines to help me line things up. We can get rid of some of those. But now, see, these are the holes right here. Those are the actual pockets that those Rayfix fasteners go in. And if I take that part and delete it, you see there's the holes. Now, the nice part about this is because this is all drawn together, uh, everything lines up. So that's that, to me, that's really uh, a real advantage. That, and if you look inside there, you can tell they line up. Now these holes are actually through holes and those are going to have screws that go through because that didn't make sense to put ray fixes in there. So that's how I designed the product. Now let's take, um, now even though I designed this in Rhino, I did not toolpath it in it. I basically took this design, created the actual drawings that I needed, and then actually nested them and toolpath them in VCAR Pro, which we use all the time, which is a wonderful product. I wanted to make this uh, golf bag rack RTA, which means ready to assemble. So that means that you can take it apart and put it together. And the, what makes that work is a fastener. This is called a Rayfix fastener, and this is a post that goes with it. And the post mounts on one piece, and the Rayfix fastener mounts in a hole in the other one. You put those together, and there's a cam inside that you turn, and that tightens it together. It's a real nice clamping action. It really holds it together well. So that's, that's how we're going to actually assemble this. So this is going to be an RTA product. Okay, we're going to use two different tools to actually uh, make this product. One is, uh, is going to be a router bit, 
but we're going to drill the holes. So we're going to actually drill the holes with a different tool. And these are five millimeter drills. There's really two different types of them. One of them is a brad point, and a brad point is used to drill flat bottom holes. And then there's a pointed variation of this that works real well if you're drilling all the way through and you don't want to chip the bottom surface. It's really not necessary to use this pointed one on this material. If it were melamine or something, absolutely you'd need it. But the brad point bit should work fine uh, for both applications. And the reason we're drilling holes through is some of the parts get assembled with screws rather than the ray fixes. This is a router bit. We're going to cut the parts out and cut the pockets for the ray fix fasteners with. This is called a compression bit. Compression bit has an up shear and a down shear component. The idea of that is that both of those tend to compress towards the center, therefore you don't get chipping on top or bottom. Works really well with panel materials. Now, this is a specific type of compression bit called a mortising compression. And what that means is that the tip of the, the up shear part is very small. This one's probably less than a quarter inch. And that works well because I can use that also to cut quarter inch dados. A lot of times if I don't have a tool changer on the machine, I use the, this bit for everything. Okay, now let's look at what it takes to go from something I designed in a 3D modeling software, in my case it's, it's a Rhino, uh, into a geometry I can cut in something simple like VCAR Pro. Well, what you have here on the screen, this is one of the parts, so I separated that part out and positioned it where it's laying flat. And you can see all the geometry. Well, let's, let's look at that uh, a little bit different. Here's the shaded area. Okay, so that's, that shading just shows you a little bit more detail. And so what do we have here? Well, we have the outline of the geometry in the holes. Well, what do I need to make that in VCAR Pro? All I need to know is the outline, which side of the line to cut on, and how deep. That's it. If it's the outside of a part, I cut through the material to the outside. If it's a hole, I should know how deep I want to cut it. So those are the things I need. So in a 3D model like this, <clears throat> if you think about this surface, the edge of that surface is a line, so that's a contour. So that's the outside. All of those holes have circles, so those circles become the geometry. So what I can actually do is I can come over here and I can turn that geometry on and the part off and there's what I need to machine it. And all those shapes came from that piece that I created in the model. That's the connection. And so then this gets saved as a DXF, so you do that for each part. And then we go to VCAR Pro and we bring those in and we nest them and we tool path them. Now let's look at that. Okay, now before we output code, let's do one more thing. VCAR Pro has great simulation. And it's, and it's, if, when you're just learning this CNC, it's your real friend because if it's wrong on the screen, it'll be wrong out there. So let's make sure we've got this right. So I'm going to go to the simulation and we'll basically simulate all the tool paths and make sure that what comes out on the sheet is what we think is going to happen. And boy, that looks great. Now, once that's done, I'm happy with that, we're going to output code. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to output the tool paths that have the 5 millimeter drill as a program. All right, and so we're going to save that, and I'm just going to call that 5mm just to make it easy. Whoops, 5mm. Okay, there's the first program. Okay, then we're going to select the other programs, the other tool paths that use a quarter compression, and we'll save, and we'll say compress, C-O-M-P. That'll be fine. Now I've got two programs It's easy to identify. I'll transfer those over to a jump drive and let's go out to the machine and let's make this thing. Okay, we're just about ready to run our golf bag rack on the Smart Shop One. Now here's what we've done so far. We've basically put the gasketing in the vacuum table and we've applied the spool board to it, tested it, everything works. We've made sure all our valves are open. We've put our material on the table. We've touched our tool off. Now the first tool that's going to be used is the five millimeter drill. So the first thing you're going to see is the holes get drilled. Then we're going to change tools and we're going to put the compression bit in and we're going to use automatic tool touch off for that. All right, now I still have to hook my dust collector hose up to the machine and we'll turn the vacuum pump on with this switch right on the machine control.
These look pretty good. The edge finish is excellent. You know, we, that compression bit does a great job, and the machine rigidity is, is the key to all of that. There's no chatter. Okay, we're looking good there. All right, that went together pretty good. We've got our, the last piece is our adjustable shelf and it fits in this space right here. And we've got holes for adjustable shelf stops. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. We tried to accomplish two things here. One was we wanted to share with you one of the most exciting new products that I've seen in a long, long time, and that's the Laguna Smart Shop 1. We were able to take the same engineering that we developed for the Smart Shop 2 and bring into it, and it's a very affordable package, and it's, it's basically a, an entry-level nested base machine because it has a vacuum table and all that, and it's very affordable. I also wanted to show you uh, an approach to design things, in 3D and then convert that into parts that you can cut with VCAR Pro and, and, and that really changes the dimension of how you do woodworking sometimes. If you have any questions, lagunatools.com, you can call us at 800-234-1976. Thank you for watching.